we're on the march, the empire's on the run. Before we go any further, I'm excited about freedom. I'm awake. I'm upset. And I want to just, 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 just follow me here. This is one of the most important things I've ever talked about. And I'm going to spend a few minutes, then we're going to our in-studio guest. Who's driven here from South Texas. When I see a pregnant woman in a grocery store or on the street, or I see a woman with a newborn baby, and I generally, I always do it if they're with their husband, because it you know, might be creepy for a woman alone to have some guy come over and get in her business. But it doesn't matter, I still do it because it has to be done. But I especially do it 100% of the time if a man's with her. When I see them, I have a responsibility to warn them about the GMOs, the fluoride, the what's in the vaccines on record, U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, where it says for experimental or law enforcement reasons, they can kill you in test. They say that's the law. I say that's a fraud. And all the history of secret experimentation. I have a responsibility. If I was in Alabama, they didn't learn about this till the 80s. It went on for 45 years. If I was in Alabama when tens of thousands of black people came in for checkups, were told they were being given vaccines, and they were really being given a, a Pentagon-run program to give them syphilis, to spread syphilis amongst blacks, and to also test it. Horrible, torturous deaths that took decades. Spreading it to hundreds of thousands is estimated. Just like the declassification of HIV being put in the hepatitis shots for gay men in New York as a vector in the 70s. It was a Navy... Uh, chemical, uh, biological, uh, weaponized cancer program under another name. We know it is HIV AIDS today. That, by the way, is on record. The general public just hasn't researched it. So I know this type of stuff. I have responsibility because I know the major vaccines on record have cancer viruses, microplasms, all the additives. The insert says it can kill you, give you cancer. Guillain-Barre's neurological disorders, uh, narcolepsy. I have a responsibility, okay, to warn these people. And that's my info war. So my dad goes jogging with me this morning because I'm making him, trying to get him in shape. I'm trying to get in shape myself. He's about 100 yards behind me. I walk by, I jog by these people. They're walking by me. And I see the father and the mother with a little bitty, look like almost newborn baby in the little pack on his chest. And uh, I notice the guy kind of looks at me and looks concerned. I go, oh, that guy recognizes me, probably isn't a fan. I could assess him instantly, run by. I'm like, I'm not going to mess with him. I come back by later, they're, they're, they're walking back the other way. And I said, hey, uh, nice baby, I got three kids myself. I kind of stop, I go, man, I'm trying to get back in shape, this is hard, I really am taking a breather. And they're kind of looking at me, smiling. And I go, uh, you know, nice baby. And they're like, oh, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And the guy goes, are you Alex Jones? And I said, yeah, and shook his hand, and she said her name. And his name is, um, his name is um, Ryan Crowley. We found his Facebook, and this is the guy. Just a couple hours ago, I was out there. There he is with his nice dogs. He's a PhD student in social studies uh, at uh, the University of Texas. He's a, UH, uh, a PhD candidate. I think he may already be a PhD. I don't have time to do research on him. And I'm going to start, I didn't do this today, videotaping the people. And I'm going to start putting them on air so that it, so it gets some attention so that they get warned and so other people learn how to warn people. I'm not going to just tell you about this now. I'm going to multitask and then reach hundreds of thousands or millions by shooting a video and talking about them. And I talked to him for about two minutes. And uh, I said, listen, I don't want to get in your business. But I said, vaccine technology is 500 years old. The guy looked like he was a smart guy. I said, you probably know that. And she was nodding. And I said, I'm not even saying there isn't something to the science. It's that the history of testing. He started rolling his eyes. And I went, well, you know about that. And he goes, that was a long time ago. I go, really? No, it's a lot worse now. It's, it's all currently going on. They just use things that are less aggressive that kill you down the road or lower IQ. And I said, look up U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32 on bans on human testing, except for exemptions on law enforcement or uh, research purposes. And then now she's smiling at me, almost laughing, almost thanking, almost, you know, saying, enjoy the rest of your run as I ran on up the hill. So I, I haven't had time to look at his PhD papers. I don't, I don't know his politics, but he looked almost amused, but also kind of freaked out. And I said, listen, I care about your baby. I have responsibility. And I said, just like if it was Tuskegee, and I would have known in the 60s, decades before it came out, if I saw black folks walking into the clinic, I would be out there saying they're going to inject you with syphilis. And I said... Just because, you, and I can tell, you're probably in the system somehow by the way you're looking at me. The guy's going to listen and hear this and go, wow, this guy really did read me. I, I, think, I thought he was probably a cop or military or something. I, I can tell he was establishment, but no, he's, he's going to be an academic. Because there was kind of this smiling, like laughing. And I went, listen, I just care about your kid. You've been warned. 
and I turned and walked off. And people could say, man, that's really weird to do that. No, it's not. If I knew black people were being injected with syphilis, and I use that example because people seem to only know about that. Folks, they did it to poor Appalachians. They did it to Guatemalans. They're still doing it. They just gave hundreds of thousands of people in Africa and India polio with the polio vaccine on record, and it was a footnote in the paper. 66,000 kids got paralyzed in one round of shots in India alone. Bill Gates Foundation. Okay, I mean... I have a responsibility. This isn't a game. And I get why the people want to laugh, because if you don't laugh, you've got to admit it's true and then do something. So he's probably a great guy. My point is, is that he told me his name. I went and looked him up. He's a public figure, got a Facebook. I'm here talking about him and his wife. I love you. I want humanity to survive. I don't want to be under eugenics. I love everybody, and I'm here doing this so you hear about it, so you really research U.S. Code, Title 50, Chapter 32, Subsection 1528, Paragraph B, which says we ban secret testing unless it's authorized for law enforcement purposes or research purposes. So I'm done talking about that. And they've got other codes and they change it one year and change it back the next. So there's a bunch of versions. The point is everybody knows about secret testing. Everybody knows the IQ is lowering. Everybody knows bisphenol A reduces fertility. Everybody knows this. Now we're joined by a guy that I've got to say, as for medical guest, health guest, nutrition guest, is the most popular we've ever had. Hands down, Dr. Ed Group. And I'm not going to go over his whole giant bio. You can go to his website and look at that. But it's it's a huge, um, he's a diplomat of the American Clinical Board of Nutrition, doctor of chiropractic, uh, diplomat of the American Board of uh, Functional Medicine, diplomat of the chiropractic board of uh, clinical uh, nutrition, a naturopathic physician, certified clinical nutritionist, holistic health practitioner, certified clinical herbalist, and one of the big formulators in the country. Like now that I really know who he is, he's like the name in it. That's why I said who's the best. Everybody told me this guy, so I got him. Lives here in Texas. Alternative medicine practitioner and a lot more. And he heads up his big, uh, you know, different centers and things. We're going to tell you about that. But the reason I got him back, and he's here with us till the bottom of the next hour, and then we're getting LaRouge on at the bottom of the hour. The reason I got him here is obviously we've had so many frequently asked questions about nascent iodine. You heard pharmacist Ben Fuchs, also a great mind, concur with his analysis yesterday. Uh, he, of course, heads up the, um, go back to the top and I'll actually plug the site for folks, Global Healing Center, uh, Natural Health and Organic a Living. And we wanted to get him back on to talk about nascent iodine and other things that go with it that are so important and why People are you know, really blown away by it and what it does is a shield against fluoride and other things. But I, but you just heard my whole rant. We're going to break in a moment, Dr. Grip, and I appreciate you being here. We're also going to tape an interview that will air next week for the Nightly News. But, but you just heard what I said. Do you think it's extreme or bad to warn people when you know the vaccine insert says there's a chance it could kill your child or hurt them and they lie at the hospital and, and tell you that it's safe and effective, no side effects, when even the drug ads on TV have to admit what it can do to you. With vaccines, they don't do that because they're the worst. Do you think I'm wrong? Should I not warn these people? I, I think you should warn everybody. I warn people too. I remember when my wife was pregnant and we went to the gynecologist's office, which I didn't even really want to go, but she wanted to do some tests just to make sure everything was okay. And there was a big sign on the door that said, don't forget to get your vaccine today for pregnant women. And I was in shock. And there was some people sitting in the office and I was like, listen, do not get a vaccine. This is what can happen to you. Da, 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 da. And it's amazing that we are literally living in a chemical matrix because what led me to, to the root cause of diseases, I wasn't even taught that in all the schooling that I went through. And medical doctors aren't even taught what the root cause of disease is. And they don't want to teach them that because even natural schools will teach you to prescribe a natural herb for something. I went on a mission like you for 10 years to try to figure out what's causing all these problems. What's the main reason we have all these chemicals in the environment? Looking at the air, looking at the water quality, looking at the food people are putting in their system, and then realize that all disease, I traced it all back and even looked at Russian and, and German research. Basically, all the chemical stew that you're bringing into your body on a daily basis overloads your system and you're not able to get it out fast enough. And that is a direct link to all disease. And what we figured out was the most important part of the body, which is never taught in medical school, is how important the intestines are. Because when you look and you get a list of a million different chemicals and toxins that are entering the system on a daily basis, 
well, where are those and how are those toxins coming into the body? They're, most of them are all coming in through the intestines. And that's why people have such bad intestinal problems. That's why they have leaky gut, the GMOs with the BT toxin, burning holes through the intestinal lining, and all those toxins. Does that to the honeybees on studies? Absolutely. It blows up their stomach. I mean, the BT toxin. So what happens is you have an excess of toxins coming in and not, you know, not even to mention all the anti-fertility stuff that's out there, the thyroid disruption, the lack of iodine. And by the way, and even mainline medical doctors, science, as you know, until about 10 years ago, they said never take a vaccine when you're pregnant because it's known to lead to miscarriage. Uh, autism, so many neurological problems. That is mainline medical science. Any doctor who was trained before 10 years ago will say, you know, we were taught that. We know that. Now it's like, no, you need extra when you're pregnant. And now look at all the uh, drug stores everywhere. You go to a drug store and you get 5% off your bill if you get a vaccination. If you get uh, flu shots now, they're promoting flu shots for pregnant women. So it's a conglomerate of all these toxins that are being pushed upon us to create disease, to put money back it, into the main. It system. is. It is. It is a mainlining of secret testing, bioweapon programs under the eugenics program carried out in Germany, England, the United States. The United States with England created eugenics. They created Adolf Hitler on record. And I told this Ph.D. guy that. And I said, you know that. You know it was Time, Time Magazine Man of the Year. You know they set him up. The guy was like kind of listening to me at that point. We're in deep trouble. Stay with us. Um, you were getting into this total assault and why they want to make us sick for the medical model, this medical tyranny. In Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia, the medical system was the tyranny because the tyrants found guys in white lab coats and get away with anything. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, if the if if a whole population is constantly sick, I mean, you can walk up to anybody on the streets right now and say, do you feel healthy? Do you feel 100 percent? I mean, you're not going to find anybody. I mean, even children, they're starting now when women are pregnant. They're starting before women are pregnant. They're trying to prevent them from getting pregnant. I mean, it's. Even if the if a young child is born, they're finding all kinds of chemicals in the breast milk right now. That from the time the child is born, they're fed not breast milk, what they should be fed in most cases, but they're on soy formulas, GMO stuff. I mean, the kid is now sick from an early age. The mothers are sick. I mean, people, everybody out there suffers from at least one, two, three, four, five different negative health conditions, and it says really the solution is as easy as we know, and we've been talking about it for years, how many chemicals and how many toxins and all this stuff that we're bombarded with on a daily basis. Everybody has to cleanse their body on a regular basis. They have a shower. They take a shower. They wash their skin, but they don't clean the inside of their system. And the big secret that we found was if you have a million toxins coming into your body on a daily basis and you're only able to get rid of let's say 500,000 toxins on a daily basis, you still have 500,000 toxins that your body has to keep and store somewhere in its system. And how do we n normally naturally get rid of toxins? Well, through exercise, we have respiration, sweating, we have urination, we have defecation. We, and women have five elimination routes because they have their menstrual We cycles. also have abomination. Yeah, well, that's a whole nother subject right there, which is going to even cause more damage to the healthcare and system. Have, and we have chemtrailination, but go ahead. We have chemtrailination, and we have the fact that we have a declining healthcare system that's a serious, serious problem. And we need people to stand up and take responsibility for their own health, really, because you know how much we can save and how we can attack this whole system is just preventing ingestion of all the things that cause disease. Just if you take away. 90% of the things that uh, toxins that people are putting into their system on a daily basis, you can reduce doctor's visits. You can reduce prescription medication. You're right. Fees. Stay there. I mean, I saw a Washington Post article a few months ago where they have to plant crops for the bees that aren't for humans just so all the bees don't die. That's how toxic it is. Well, if you just joined us, J.P. Morgan Chase says they don't need your business. They've got the Federal Reserve. They've got tens of trillions of banker bailout money. They're going to basically charge you to deposit cash with them. Won't let you make any foreign transfers of money, but money can come in. Sounds like capital controls to me. The story's top story on DrudgeReport.com. Dr. Ed Group's with us. Another 30 minutes. Then Lyndon LaRouge is going to pop in to give us his geopolitical uh, angle uh, on what's happening and more here on this Thursday uh, edition of the Worldwide Transmission. Doc, you were getting cut off by the break there. 
uh, going to break. Uh, we're going to talk about bisphenol A coming up in the next segment, ways to, you know, detox the body of that and more. But you've got the floor. I mean, what else is important for people to know? Well, what we found was that your intestines and your, your intestinal tract really is the main focus point. So if you keep that clean on a regular basis using like a really good oxygen-based cleanser, you can prevent. It's all about preventing the and, and addressing the root cause of disease instead of addressing the symptoms of disease. We know all the chemicals are going to come in. They're going to get leaked through. They're going to cause damage to all the organs. They're going to dumb you down. But what can people do about that? I mean, that's the main thing. People want solutions. The best thing you can do is reopen your elimination routes, which means exercising, breathing better, sweating more, and then eliminating the toxins that could be coming into your system and cleansing. Like, just imagine if you were to take something, every single meal that someone would eat and put it in a big trash can. I mean, they're going to have a breakfast meal with a big 42-ounce Coke. They're going to have a lunch meal, which is probably going to be a big meat, potatoes, all kinds of stuff, GMO, dinner, wine, dessert. Mix all that up in a big trash can and pour it over the top of your system and then never take a shower for two or three days. Well, I tell you, most people are constipated. They're not going to the bathroom two or three times a day. So all that stuff is going and sitting. It's and a sitting miracle we're even, I mean, no wonder we have the highest cancer rate in the world. No wonder our IQ is dropping. You know the studies? Guys, pull that up. U.S. IQ, lowest in the world. England trails us. It's not just that we're dumbed down in the school. We are physically brain damaged. Right, because when you put all that stuff inside the system, if you take the intestines out and cut them open, it's going to be about 35 feet 35 square feet or the size of a tennis court is the surface area. So if you have all that and you're not cleaning it out on a regular basis, like two or three times a week, then all that's going to just keep building up and building, building up and building. And that's up. why bowel diseases are off the charts. And I'm going to have you back in soon to do a whole hour just on gut support. It's amazing. Why is nascent iodine so key? Nason iodine is so key because how many people do you know are losing their hair now? How many people do you know that have cold hands and cold feet, especially women? If you have that extra weight around your waist area, all of that has to do with thyroid and all that can be linked to iodine deficiency. How many people do you know that don't sweat? A lot of times when people don't sweat, it's an iodine deficiency. I would say that if you were to look at every single thing, and I've researched every mineral, vitamin for over 20 years, I would say oxygen is one of the most important things you can put in the body. It's the ultimate detoxifier. The second thing is iodine. Iodine is regulated and needed by every single cell inside your system. If you can trace every disease pretty much to, has something to do with iodine, whether it's too much fluoride coming in, whether it's too much bromide coming into the body. Which they try to pile on us. Which they try to pile on And you. then we have the documents where they admit they're doing it on purpose. It's not like two plus two. It looks like they're doing it on purpose. They admit they're doing it. No, it's all a fact. I mean, it's all a fact. And when they know, that's why they took iodine out of the bread. That's why they took iodine out of the salt, because they know that anyone who's deficient in iodine, and you talk about mental retardation and problems with brain function, women, pregnant women, need twice as much iodine during pregnancy. And the RDA is 150 micrograms a day. I mean, that's just enough to prevent a goiter in studies that were done on rats. And so they do it so you don't get the goiter and no. They do it right at the level, just <laughs> absolute scientific targeting with, with hatred. Oh, but they would inject people with syphilis. They love us. Exactly. Maybe I'm nuts because I would have warned somebody, black or white, don't go in that clinic and get injected with syphilis. That means I'm a bad person. Right. I mean, we're all bad for warning people because we're going against the system. I mean, the system. Yeah, so everybody go have the government inject you with cancer viruses and syphilis. They love you. Okay? There's too many of us. Ted Turner's right. Group and Anthony Gucciardi are both here in studio with us with some big breaking news that came out yesterday on Fox News, a new Lancet study. There's also another uh, big study that's uh, come out that we're going to be uh, breaking down, dealing with BPA levels and attacking the chromosomes of the body. Now, we already knew this. Our guests, doctors, and experts said this 15 years ago. They know, and they do this on purpose. It's actually more expensive for them to add the BPA. I've talked to top engineers, chemical engineers, retired engineers. They don't know why they're ordered to do it. Well, I know why. It reduces fertility massively. Uh, and, of course, it retards uh, you know, development. That's all part of the fun. So we're going to be talking about that. The big story up at InfoWars.com. Updated Chase Bank limits cash withdrawals, bans international wire transfers. 
capital controls imposed on small business owners. Uh, and this really points towards uh, hyperinflation, which was what QE Unlimited will do. We'll talk about it with Lennon LaRouge coming up at the bottom of the hour. And then we've got a bunch of pro-Second Amendment activists popping in in the next hour ahead of an armed uh, march to demonstrate the Second Amendment in San Antonio that I will be attending. And I will be uh, carrying a 308 uh, Reaper rifle uh, as well, totally legal and lawful. And the police chief said he will now honor the Second Amendment and will not be arresting people. So hope to see all the listeners down at that. That is coming up 10 a.m. in front of the Alamo, San Antonio, Texas. Now here's the AP article, BPA miscarriage link. Study finds chemical may raise risk. And uh, they've got a bunch of different uh, big studies uh, that are now uh, coming out uh, on this front. In fact, the article I had yesterday actually showed the two different studies. But uh, Anthony Gucciardi is here with Dr. Ed Group. And, and uh, Anthony, you first talk about BPA, then we'll get Dr. Group's uh, take on this. Sure. So we know for years now that BPA is linked to breast cancer over 130 studies besides uh, Susan G. Komen denying it. And we know for a fact it's causing infertility. But here's the most interesting thing about this study. Not only does it, of course, increase your risk of miscarriage and things like that by about 10 times or massive percentages, but here's something that most people are missing. This is only in the AP. Most miscarriages are due to egg or chromosome problems, and a study in mice suggested BPA might influence that risk. So what this, is, there's an implication here that not only is the BPA, of course, causing miscarriages, but it's actually augmenting and mutating the eggs or the chromosomes in your body. And that has way more implications than just miscarriages. We're and that's a statement by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. Yeah, a Stanford University uh, endocrinologist was saying that. This is in the Associated Press mainstream media. So they're saying now it looks like BPA is going in, infiltrating the chromosomes and warping them and uh, affecting the Just eggs. like last year's study showed GMO is. Yeah, exactly. So we're being infiltrated. And notice also at the end it says it is impossible to avoid it completely, speaking on BPA. But here's the thing. A woman is born with a preset amount of eggs. In the event that BPA is so just in invasive in our food supply and our overall environmental health, what's happening is all eggs are being targeted and destroyed. By this is children eggs. of men scenario. Yeah, exactly. So we could have widespread infertility. It's not like someone's going to be born, uh, born unless they're in like a third world nation with lower BPA. It seems like the United States is being hit so heavily that all women now are being affected. All babies are and being And by the way, it's on almost all the printer ink, the receipts. They And again, I've talked to the... Um, the chemical engineers, uh, the, the people that run these plants, they go, there's no reason. They have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different combinations where this isn't needed. This is done on purpose. No, you mentioned earlier, it costs more to make stuff with BPA. It's also in dollar bills. 90% of currencies contain BPA. Chemical weapon. Yeah. Complete Doctor group. decimation. Well, you know, one of the things we've been focusing on is BPA de is detoxification of BPA because it's an endocrine disruptor and it, it disrupts the thyroid, it disrupts the metabolism, it, it alters estrogen levels in the body. We already have high estrogen levels, men and female, because of all the soy that's out there. But John P. Holdren said in EcoScience in 74 that there's too many of us. Well, the point is... You know, people say, well, there are too many of us, and they go along with that argument, but we're all being hit. Don't you get it? These yuppies are going and trying to have kids while they say there's too many people, and there's a chemical weapon program. This is big news. If you go in any supermarket and you pick up any container, you know, the milk jugs, the plastic uh, water bottles, it's going to contain the BPA. paper liners, the, the paper, paper plates, the paper, uh, just the jugs. I mean, and even the organic. I mean, you can like the organic coconut that's in the little uh, uh, flimsy uh, containers. What they have is aluminum lining, and then they have BPA over that. And I was just at the Supply Side Expo in Las Vegas, and I was looking at packaging out there. It's the biggest manufacturing packaging expo there is. Every single supplier of packaging material out there has aluminum lined containers with a coat of BPA on them. And not only that, what most people don't know, and this is what I found out for the first time. It's the juice box liners for the, the kids. The juice box liners, everything, is that now they're setting up, and this is kind of a secret thing, they're setting up mandatory programs to where every single production, food, dietary supplement, everything goes, when it's done, it goes through an x-ray machine and gets irradiated and x-rayed. That's right. They've always been lobbying to get it legalized just 10 years ago. They also spray live viruses on meat that eat the bacteria that are grown in giant vaccine vats. That's, uh, guys, you can type in viral spray sprayed on meat, ABC News, six years ago. And now, exactly, you're saying you were there. They're moving to make everyone with the FDA, make everyone irradiate it. 
That's right. I mean, you, nobody knows that all their organic food and all their dietary supplements are going through x-ray machines before they go into the packaging system. And, um, you know, I tried to get some information on it. Is that, is it absolutely a regulatory thing right now? And it's not, but all the companies are doing it. And they're saying we're doing it because we want to make sure there's no metal or any shavings of anything. It's in always for our safety. Yeah, it's for our safety. And, and the pharmaceutical drugs are also using BPA, but so are the nutraceutical industry. It's, they're putting BPA because for who knows why, it's, it's more expensive. They're putting BPA into uh, nutraceuticals now, like, you know, natural supplements. So it's just so pervasive. That's why you have to go with a brand that does not have it. And, you know, well, it's like vitamins are having aspartame added when it's not even a vitamin that you dissolve in your mouth. It's just, oh, well, this, this is the new vitamin. The wood alcohol, you need it. They're loading it up. And By also, the way, Survival Shield that's back-ordered that you developed, uh, I'm telling you, this is special nascent iodine. Tell, uh, you were telling me off-air, it's called Survival Shield because this type of nascent atomic iodine is a shield for so much of this. And and then tell me, because let's, I mean, let's talk about the leading competitor. I'm not, we, pull, we pulled the label off because I feel sorry for him. We tried, to be honest, Dr. Group, as you know. You said, fine, go ahead and do that, to find other people to make nascent iodine, and we got it, and we can't sell it. Because we cannot sell this to our customers. You are the only guy in the country. You even have your own factory as well. Why is yours different than the leading competitor and what does it do? Well, first of all, there's a major shortage right now because everybody in Japan, China, and all over the world wants iodine and they want the best form available. So, I mean, that's a lot of the reason why you're on back order. And that's why I, I suggest everybody just try to stock up as much as possible because it's only going to get worse. We're getting calls from Japan, China, and everything else where they want to buy the raw iodine. They want to buy the nascent iodine because they know how fast it works. I mean, the nascent iodine is an electrically charged. I mean, it goes through a special processing, our, our processing system, which makes it different than any of the other forms of iodine out there. I mean, this is, would be a standard form of nascent iodine, which is in an alcohol base. Here, let's show folks the leading competitor right here. That's what it does to the top in a year. Rob Dew actually bought this a year ago, and this is what it is in his office on the shelf, did that. Uh, this is ours versus that, and, and you have a bottle you did 20-something years ago, still tastes just like that in the glycerin. That actually tastes good uh, to me. It tastes sweet compared to that tastes like the most nasty thing. I, and I, I mean, I can drink like 10 shots of Jack Daniels straight. It tastes like mama's milk to me. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I can, I can handle anything and I can't do that. No, I actually, what's the difference? Yeah. So Rob actually got this bottle here and, and for the radio listeners, basically what happened was there's a glass dropper and it was the off gassing of the iodine or the grain alcohol, something ate away the plastic holding, tethering the, uh, plas uh, the glass dropper and that fell in. So we had to take that out. But then the rubber, it's not, it's, it might not actually be rubber, but the top here, we don't use rubber, but it was so degraded that it also fell off. And the remaining is this plastic goo at the top. And by the way, let's be clear. We went all over trying. No, no, we actually wanted this to be good. In fact, the crazy thing is we were actually looking to have this made by these people and getting tests. And, and, and they basically are nice folks to admit, well, it, it, it. And, then, and then Alex wanted to try it. So we were like, well, let's try it, you know, see what it tastes like. And he, he literally stepped backwards a few steps after he took it. And I thought he was joking around. He, 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 at first, he probably was joking, but then he realized, wow, this is horrible. And I said, I can't be that bad. Give me some. I put it on my tongue. It started burning my tongue. And then it, it went numb to the point where when I was eating something, I couldn't even taste it. It was just the now, worst. Now, thing. Dr. Group, explain why, why when it's, because you kept saying glycerin, glycerin, or it breaks down. This is obviously broken down into something. What's happening? Well, first of all, uh, the standard old school method of doing nascent iodine is in an alcohol base. And that's 100% alcohol. That's like Everclear. You could run your car on that stuff. It's a, you know, I would never give that to a baby. I would never give it to my kid. I mean, it's going to burn their mouth. They're not going to want it. What we did is we took 10 years to develop a new technology, which is basically a thermodynamic, pressure-sensitive, high energy sound pulse technology which creates a nano emulsion of the iodine into the glycerin matrix and so it's it's i think it's even better than the standard of a nascent iodine because it's a stable compound i was talking you guys have this proprietary and my dad looked this up because i've did years of research he said no they're like the only specially certified like i guess it's all secret or whatever but the government had to certify it where i guess it's a gas and it's injected in or something 
and all this other, I mean, I'm guess, I, mean, I don't know how you guys do that. Well, put it this way, I, I, you know, I love doing stuff like that. I'm a big fan of Nikola Tesla and, I, and quantum physics, and that's kind of my hobby. So what we did was I actually worked with two uh, Russian physicists, some of the top Russian physicists. Oh, you never bragged about this. I went and looked yeah. it up. It's like in the National <laughs> Institutes of Health and stuff. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so uh, so anyway, it took over a period of time. I mean, that's why people will say, well, you can't get that mi that much, th many micrograms of iodine in vegetable glycerin. Well, vegetable glycerin, first of all, is a lot heavier than alcohol, so you have to do the calculations different. But this way, you have an active form of nascent iodine, which is going to penetrate and be used by all the pumps. It's All right, final segment with you guys. I know you're going to go tape something for the nightly news next week, but I want to get it up quickly because we have a lot of frequently asked questions about nascent iodine, the real nascent iodine uh, that you've produced for us and developed uh, for InfoWarsLife.com. But, I mean, it really is survival shield from all the research I've done, all the experts I talk to, because if you don't have this, all the bad stuff goes in the thyroid. And then how does that tie into things like bisphenol A and what we're being bombarded with, Dr. Group? Well, bisphenol A is a thyroid disruptor. It's an endocrine disruptor. And I mean, when you look at all, first of all, all the cells in the body require iodine, but the endocrine, the thyroid to produce the T3, to produce T4, which is just tyrosine plus iodine molecules, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, all due to, or can be linked back at least 99.9% .9 of the cases to an iodine deficiency. And what's happening out there is, Iodine is a major detoxifier. I mean, we're talking about all these chemicals. Iodine detoxifies fluoride. It de detoxifies chlorine, bromine. It detoxifies mercury. It detoxifies lead from the body. So if someone is taking a nascent iodine and they start developing symptoms like maybe skin rash or upset stomach or something, that's a telltale sign that it's working so good it's probably pulling that bromine out and is detoxifying your body. It's all about detoxification. That's why not only will all of your organs start functioning better but, and your skin, your dry skin will go away. And you, if you have problems with your salivary glands in your mouth, if your tongue feels too big for your mouth, that's another indication that you're low on iodine. The list goes on and on and on, Alex. I mean, it, the fact is there were studies done of, with over 5,000 patients and 95 to 96% of those people that were tested were deficient in iodine. It's something that you're not going to get from the food, and it's something that... But, I mean, you didn't... I mean, you bragged and said yours was unique, but this this, this is really special. Because I guess... I mean, I guess the stuff that tastes horrible that they call nascent iodine is actually good for you? It's not bad for you. It's just the, the fact that, number one, it's in an alcohol base, and number two, um, you know, you want to use iodine during pregnancy. You want to use iodine for children, and you don't want to use that with, with alcohol. I mean, alcohol is an addictive substance. It's a drug. It's probably one of the worst drugs out there, actually. It's with Al-Qaeda. And... Um, you know, it's it's like technology hasn't changed in a hundred and something years. So what we wanted to do was just bring new technology, something that could be absorbed very rapidly, something that everybody could take. They could get their iodine in a usable form. They could give it to their children. Women could take it during pregnancy. And, oh, my gosh, if you have iodine around the house and your whole family's taking it, um, you know, if we had every single person in the United States or in the world doing that, it would drastically reduce. Probably it would put the pharmaceutical industry out of business. But they don't want that. They want to bankrupt America and the Western world with this weaponized medicine program. In closing, you have frequently asked questions at InfoWarsLife.com on the iodine where people can pre-order it. So when the next batch comes in, they get it. Uh, and, of course, you produce it for yourself as well. That's way back ordered and sold out as well. So people can go to InfoWarsLife.com, and it's the exact same iodine you produce just for us and yourself. And we're very thankful that you did partner with us. I know you've turned on a lot of other people, and I'm very honored, Dr. Group, you've done this with us. I know you're very successful with your whole nutraceutical line, and, and we're just honored to be working with you. Thanks. I appreciate it. By the way, one more thing is uh, there's no bacteria that's resistant to iodine, no virus resistant to iodine, no fungus resistant to iodine, no mycoplasm resistant to iodine. So we talk about if there's a biological warfare, which we know that's being injected through the vaccines and through the air, 
iodine is going to protect people against any type of biological Amazing. Warfare. And then on top of it, the glycerin in this is non-GMO. Because we talked yes. to all these companies, and it's very hard to get you know, other people. That's why we haven't done more of this. We can't find anybody that will really give us a pure product. No, that's exactly right. In fact, before all of this, before we got into Survival Shield, one of the things I was doing is trying to find suppliers for not just iodine, just everything that I wanted personally and to help other people with non-GMO. Because all of my readers were saying, basically, how do I find something that's super non-GMO? And when I would contact the big three, the nutraceutical people, they would say, yeah, you know, we kind of try to not use GMOs because some of our consumers think it's bad, but we can't guarantee it. And I'd say, well, does this specifically, you know, the vitamin C contain GMO? And they say, well, about 98% of uh, corn is GMO. So we extract it from the corn. So chances are yes, but we try to use non-GMO sources. So that's unacceptable to me. We have to push the ante here and say, hey. This is totally certified up one side, down the other. Amazing. Well, guys, I know you're going to go shoot some stuff for the news. I know you've got to go soon, Dr. Grip, to get back, uh, you know, to your operation down in South Texas. It's just, Anthony, I want to get the frequently asked questions for him to talk about those. And also, if you start taking and how you might detox. So, you know, you know, be careful, consult a physician. Because this is serious stuff, what they've done to us. And when it's coming out, believe me, I've had a lot more energy, been a lot more aggressive. You name it. My muscles are getting bigger. I've lost some weight. But at the same time, about two months into it, I am also feel almost hungover sometimes. And you were telling me that's normal, Dr. Group. It is normal when you first start taking. Well, it depends on the dose and depends on the person. A lot of times, if, uh, you know, we have a lot of people walking around with fatty livers. You know what? You'll talk about that coming up in the piece we'll have on the nightly news tonight or tomorrow. You're going to go take that right now. We'll be back live. Stay with us.